Welcome back to the Buzz Summer of Adventure, where we're previewing the programming of Showtime and going behind the scenes of Hollywood. We just raced cars like stuntmen, and now we're learning some special effects with Alterian Incorporated. My name is Tony Gardner, and I make weird stuff for a living. I do makeup and special effects for the film industry. What I love the most about it is just the, the creativity that's involved. Sometimes we're doing a, a costume on a character. Sometimes we're doing prosthetic effects or building an animatronic puppet. It's always different. That's kind of the challenge, and that's what makes it a lot of fun. The name of my company is Alterian Incorporated. We've got a core crew of maybe a dozen people. There are some people here that just punch hair. Some people just sculpt. Some people only make eyes. It's my job to sort of be the ringleader of that whole group and make all those separate pieces come together on a deadline. So this is where we work. This is Alterian. It's a little different. What makes it, makeup effects kind of fun is you can do a lot of different things. You can do really small things like fake teeth for people all the way up to fake bodies of people. We've done animals, which is really kind of the most challenging because everybody knows what an animal looks like. If you do a bad job, they know. You do a fantasy character like one of these guys over here, you can kind of get away with murder because nobody has a point of reference for a cyclops or an alien. This is actually a head cast of an actress. We design and manufacture the pieces, of the prosthetics for the person. So we start with a face cast of them to turn them into a creature or a prosthetic makeup character. We're also building stuff. So you notice a wall of tubing and nuts and bolts and fittings up here is kind of a graveyard. When we're done with the show, there are a lot of molds and things that are, are made that are part of the process to create the character. And in the end, it's not really needed anymore. So a lot of that stuff sort of gets packed up and stored away and ends up upstairs taking up lots of space. Basic tools for me come down to uh, imagination and the ability to listen to what the director is asking for. Danny Boyle on 127 Hours says, you have to present a man sawing his arm off and make it look 100% realistic because if it doesn't work, the entire film falls apart. That's what motivates me. That's what gets me excited. It's the challenge of pulling that off. This, for example, is the mold of James Franco. That's an arm. It's got to be completely uh, photorealistic duplication, so all the textures are in there. You got fingernails, all as part of the sculpture. And then out of this mold, we can cast whatever material we want. Most of the time, it's silicone. The silicone's translucent, looks the most like skin. A producer that we were working with called me up around the time the movie came out, and he said, I went to see 127 Hours last night, and they stopped the movie halfway through because the paramedics had to come and take somebody out of the audience. So I knew then that it was legitimate. That ability to emotionally hook people or viscerally connect with them on some level and make them feel an experience that isn't real actually is, that's the excitement. The guy you're gonna meet today, his name is Gabriel DeCunto, and he does beauty makeup just as well as he annihilates people with prosthetic effects makeup. He can do it all. My name is Gabriel DeCunto. I'm a makeup effects artist. You've seen my work on Dexter, currently on Ray Donovan. We've got Liev Schreiber, John Voigt. Liev plays Ray Donovan. If you've got a problem, you call Ray, and he fixes it for you. We get people getting beat up, people getting killed, shot. We have a, a boxing ring, so, you know, we have a lot of boxing injuries. It's very gritty, it's just really cool characters. My job is great because it's always changing. It's always something different. We travel a lot. Dexter is amazing to work on. They're, they're always trying to reinvent a different way to torture somebody. If it's a slit throat, we'll try and figure out what position the person's gonna be in, if they're cellophane to a table or tied to a chair. We need to work out where the, the blends are gonna go so you can hide the pieces and your tubes. Stuff like that is what inspires me. I'll show you how we would do a, a slit cheek on Dexter. That's his thing. He, he takes a blood sample of his victims. It's quick, and you know the director's like, "Okay, go," and you gotta literally put a cut on a person immediately. We use this silicone compound. It's a two-part compound. You mix the two components together, and uh, we create a cut with it. Silicone's good because it dries quick. It's translucent. This is perfect for Dexter because the director will tell you immediately, I need this now on that person, and you know, you've got 10 minutes, go. 
It's got a little bit of uh, tint to it, so it's like a flesh color. It almost doubles for skin, and when it dries, you can literally sculpt right into it. Got the stuff mixed together, now let's try it on a person. Cut on Tim's cheek here. We're gonna get a blood sample. So I mixed up the silicone. I put it on its face and smoothed out the edges. Tried to blend it off onto his skin. Once it starts to firm up, you can actually get in there with a tool and cut the, the silicone that's on his face, creating the gash in his cheek. I'm gonna take a little bit of makeup. I'm painting the silicone to match Tim's skin tone. So now I'm gonna go in for a little bit of red inside the wound. This is an alcohol-based paint that we use. I've taken some of the fake blood that we use and put it into the syringe so it's easier to apply. And I'm just going to insert it right into the meaty part of the gash. For the sake of a visual medium, there's a certain stylization. We use the head of Loma Linda ER for a lot of our research and development. And we would talk to him, what does a bullet hit look like? What does this really look like? And the reality of a bullet hit was the bullet went in and the opening sort of closed up on itself and all the mess was on the backside. Go see a Quentin Tarantino movie and it's, it's a fountain of blood. It's really a stylistic choice. A lot of times we're asked to do stuff that an actor is not willing to do, like tear his head off. So we do a dummy of that person. In this case, it's a dummy of me, actually. This was in a, a film that we did. He seems to keep resurfacing. I had a cast of my head made and then a clay copy of that created that was re-sculpted in this expression with the eyes open and the mouth slightly open. But once you've got your sculptures made and you have molds of, of the different uh, severed body parts or heads, you can mass produce as many as you want. Change the hair color and uh, the wounds on them and camouflage what the one person looks like and turn it into 20 different people. What I like about my job is the fact that we can design characters that people haven't seen before. When I was a kid, I did magic tricks, and it was all about fooling people and making something that obviously isn't real believable. I figured out a way to make somebody pay me to do the same thing as an adult. It's really great. You've seen the stunt driving and special effects, and now we're taking you to the red carpet. Coming up next, we'll attend the official Dexter red carpet premiere and meet the stars of the show.